A true man is he who knows what a family is all about. Allah made you a man and made the other a woman in order for you to get together in marriage and be able to reproduce for the sake of Allah in order to increase the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's the point of reproducing like popcorn when you don't even know what your children are doing? Allahu Akbar, you don't know, you have no time. I've got money and that's it. And let me just have as many kids as I want. So we've got 25 kids, none of them know what Islam is all about. What was the point? So this is why quality is far more important than quantity. Remember this. And if you are a real man, you will know that your spouse comes first. Really, first as in the human beings that are around you. So much so that if there is politics between your mother and your spouse, you will not disrespect your mother. But some people misinterpret the term kindness to the mother as meaning obey her even when she is wrong. Your mother is a human being, a lovely human being. Yes, we did say you serve her. We did say you will be kind to her, mashallah. But when she's making a mistake, you must be a man to say, mom, I love you so much. But you know what? This is wrong, man. You cannot do this, mom. Please don't do this. You are messing up things. And don't go and say, my wife complained to me about you because now you're messing a relationship. You're not a politician. Learn from the politicians around you, mashallah. They know how to play the politics. Really, you need to be a politician to be able to hold that knot properly. You need to be one. You need to be able, like I said, it's become a tightrope. The reason why we say it's become a tightrope is people have lost the value of what Islam teaches. They don't want to follow. If all of us were following what the deen teaches, including our mothers and fathers, our spouses and everyone else, then it would be a simple walk. It still happens in some homes. May Allah bless us and increase the number of homes where there is harmony and peace and goodness, subhanAllah. But in a lot of homes, sadly, today life is all about TV and materialism and the internet and WhatsApp and the phone and social media and whatever else we've been speaking about all along subhanallah people have removed Allah from the equation sometimes we have people who think Islam is reduced to salah and to a dress code so you have a nice long beard mashallah you're wearing hijab and niqab perhaps and you read five salah a day and you think that I'm a good Muslim no way no way that is a part of Islam indeed but it's not just Islam that is not just what it is that's not all that Islam has. No, Islam has a lot and a lot more than this. Subhanallah. You need to pray. You need to ask Allah. You need to develop your character, your conduct. You have fulfilled your right towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it was direct between you and Allah. What about the rights of fellow human beings? Guess where it starts? Ya amanu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you who believe, save yourselves and then your family members from the fire, from hellfire. It would mean that if I want to be good and kind, I need to start with my own spouse, my children, and I need to stand up for what is correct. That's a man. Subhanallah. Even if you're a woman and your parents are maltreating your spouse, your husband, you should be good enough to say, I am kind to my mother, my father. I, I am really good to them. I do not harm them. I respect them. But at the same time, what I need to know is Communicate with them that how you are treating the spouse of your of mine is wrong. You need to say it. Allahu Akbar. Many women are suffering at the hands of the mothers of their husbands. Solely because the husband doesn't have the courage to be a man. And we are not saying be rude. Remember kindness is a duty and obligation. You need to respect your mother. But with respect and kindness, you need to understand she is just but a human being. She also has her weaknesses. You know, the best of people can fall. The best of people from amongst us can make mistakes. The most knowledgeable from amongst us can make mistakes. Subhanallah. But to correct them in a beautiful way, it doesn't mean that, you know what, uh, that's it. I must go and swear my mother. No, we need to address the situation correctly with utmost respect. And this is when we will be able to consolidate what we have. You know, the spouses who respect their spouses are those whom when they have a difficulty, the spouse is the first to rush to their assistance. Subhanallah, the first to rush to your help. And as time passes, do you know what will affect you? The sacrifice, the sacrifice that you have made for your spouse is what will increase you in value. And the sacrifice that your spouse has made for you is what will increase him or her in value. So you need to sacrifice. What did I sacrifice? Not just my wealth, not just my time, but my kindness, meaning I need to be kind, my heart. I need to say good words.
I heard one man, and it's a fact, I'm a counselor myself. You know, we try to help as many as we can. But once there was a problem between certain people, and you know, our mothers are really good people. They don't mean to interfere. But sometimes there's a generation gap. So a generation gap means, you know, when there's more than 30, 40 years gap between people, they don't understand each other properly. You know, so sometimes when they don't, they, they say things and the other one hasn't understood and she will say things and the mother hasn't understood and so on. So there was a problem. And to be honest with you, the mother was more wrong in that particular case that I was dealing with. And the man says, listen, a mother I will, I, I will never replace, but a wife, there are dozens outside waiting to marry me. I looked at him and I said, do you fear Allah? Do you fear Allah? Do you want to be with the same mother in Jannah? Subhanallah. If that's the case, if she, your statement is correct, technically speaking, but as a Muslim, you should not be saying that because your mother is irreplaceable. That does not make it such that when she's wrong, that wrong is also irreplaceable. You can replace the wrong with right. Tell her, my mom, I love you. I can't replace you. You are my mother. Allah chose you for me. You are a test for me. But my beloved mother, do you know what? In this instance, you were wrong. Or get someone like me to tell your mother that, you know what? You are wrong. Really? Get a scholar, get someone else who, whom she respects to correct her. And I've been and I've done this in certain homes where you, in, you uh, tell the person, look, this is the problem. Please let your daughter live or let your son live without interfering, so to speak. And sometimes my young spouses, it's not interference. It is guidance. We mix the two up. They are guiding you. Like we said, it's their duty to guide you. If your mother sees you as a, a, a man, you were a good man, you used to get up for Salatul Fajr, read Quran. Now that you're married, everything stopped. She has every right. In fact, it's her duty, as married as you are, and as many children as you may have, it's her duty to tell you, listen, my son, you will get up for Salah. You will, but she mustn't say, and this is a mistake many women make. Ever since you got married, that woman, I don't know what she does to you at night. You can't even get up for Salah. Mom, you know what we do at night. Come on. <laughs> it's not like it's haram. I don't have to be shy about it. May Allah forgive us, really. Imagine, I've heard this happening. You know, they come, any small thing, son has a bad habit. When my son was single, he never had that bad habit. Now that he's with you, bad habits are coming in. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. If those are words that are cutting, those are remarks that are unwarranted, those are remarks that are not correct, a Muslim should not be saying that. You make dua for your son. Oh Allah, guide my son. Oh Allah, help my child. Allahu Akbar. Oh Allah, help me create a love between me and my daughter-in-law. Make the dua. Oh Allah, help us. Like this, anything goes wrong. You know, the mother, the nose is twitching sometimes. May Allah protect all our mothers. The wrong thing would be for her to say, I think my daughter-in-law is doing some magic on me. My nose is twitching. Your nose is twitching. Big deal. My nose twitches. No one did anything on you. It's just a little, perhaps blood circulation, something wrong, something here, there. It's normal. You, everyone's nose twitches once in a while. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Don't think negative. You want that not to be intact. Don't think negative. Think positive. That is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has tested you through that. So this is why we say, learn to respect one another. Become role models for your own children. Learn to stand up for your spouse when someone is wrong, whether it's in your home or out of your home. Don't allow them to be trampled by anyone and everyone. And never ever think that your spouse is an unpaid maid. A lot of people are happy. You're getting married. Ooh, we're going to have good food here. Hey, mashallah. Ooh, is she just a cook? If she likes to do it and she doesn't mind, alhamdulillah, mashallah, what a wife. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless us. Beautiful. But you can't just say, guys, no more worries. All my friends, every night you can come home. No problem. Who, who's going to prepare? My wife. Your wife is not married to your friends, my brothers. Your wife is your spouse. Yes, she may want to spoil you, but remember she's a human being, not a machine. The same applies to your husband, my beloved sisters. He's not a machine. He is a human being. He will falter. He will make mistakes. You know, I normally tell people that when you want to know everything about your spouse, the knot will break. Listen to what I just said. People say, I want to know every detail. You are not Allah. My answerability is not to you. I swear I have come across instances where a man or a woman have faulted in life, a big mistake. The spouse did not know. They came crying to the scholars or to the masjid and they repented and they became better people. And you think to yourself, the spouse didn't know. That's why they are really, really happy because the man has become a better person than he was before the mistake he made. But if the spouse found out, environment teaches the spouse to say, husband made a mistake, kick him out. 
So now she is depressed, he is depressed. And what happened? It was a mistake between him and Allah. It had nothing to do with you. So you say, I want to know every detail. I want to know every detail. Tell me. MashaAllah. You know, if she's standing with her hands on her hips, it's okay. Some would be standing with a stick. <laughs> May Allah help. And vice versa. The men are doing it as well. You don't need to know every detail. The sin sometimes is between them and Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to. Really, sometimes they will turn to Allah. If your spouse turns and leaves a bad habit because of you, they might get back into it. But if they've left the bad habit because of Allah, the chances of them getting back to it are very small because they did it for the sake of Allah.